All right, here is our second example. The only difference between this example and the previous example is the second equation here. Here we have three planes representing those three equations. Two planes are parallel to each other and the third one has intersection with the other two. The intersection of the third plane with the uh, other two parallel planes uh, are two parallel lines. Let me highlight those lines for you. So this is one line and this is the other line. So these two lines are the intersections. So as you can see, these two lines are parallel and uh, as a result, there is no solution for this system of equation. Let's go back to the equation form and see what we can get from uh, row reduction. So the first step is to transform this equation form to matrix form. So the matrix form would be a 3 by 4 matrix. On the first row we have 1, 2, negative 3 and 9. On the second row we have 2, 4, negative 6 and 30. On the third row, we have negative 1, 3, negative 4, and 15. Now, we want to transform this um, original matrix form to an echelon matrix form. So to do that, we need to transform these entries to 1. And we need to transform these entries to 0. These entries up here need to be transformed to 0, and these entries down here need to be transformed to 0. Similar to the previous example, we start with these two entries and transform them to uh, 0. So this would be your step 1. And step 2 would be transforming this entry to 0. Step 3 would be transforming these entries to 0. And step 4 would be transforming 2 to 0. So this is step 4. Let's start with step 1. I'm going to copy the matrix here. So to transform this 2 to 0, we need to replace the second row with R2 minus 2 r1 and to transform this negative 1 to 0 we need to replace the third row with r3 plus r1 so basically we're going to use the first row to do the transformation and this operation here is pivot operation the first row remains unchanged let's go ahead and apply these operations so we have the first row unchanged, 1, 2, negative 3, and 9. The second row, we have 2 minus 2 times 1, 4 minus 2 times 2, negative 6 minus 2 times negative 3, 30 minus 2 times 9. On the third row we have negative 1 plus 1, 3 plus 2, negative 4 plus negative 3, 15 plus 9. Let's go ahead and simplify this uh, matrix here. So on the first column we have 1, 2 minus 2 result is 0 and the last one on the first column is 0 moving to the second column we have 2 so 4 minus 4 the result is 0 and the third one the result is 5 
third column we have negative 3, negative 6, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, so we have 0. And here, the third entry on the third column, we have negative 4 minus 3, so we have negative 7. And moving to the last column, we have 9, 30 minus 18, we have 12, and the last entry we have 15 plus 9 which is 24. I want you to pay attention to the second row that we obtained here. Let me transform this to the equation form. So we have x multiplier 0, y multiplier 0 and z multiplier 0. So as a result, we have 0x plus 0y plus 0z equal 12. In other words, we have 0 equal 12, which is impossible. And this means that uh, there is no solution for this system of equations. So we don't need to continue further and implement the other steps. In fact, I didn't need to implement a step one from the beginning because if I go back to this original matrix form and compare the first row and second row, this is the first row representing the first equation and this is the second row representing the second equation. If I compare these two rows, I can see that the x, y, and z multipliers on the second row are multiple of x, y, and z multiplier uh, of the first row, except these two constant at the end. Whenever that's the case, there, there is no solution for the system of uh, equation. So I recommend you before I start implementing uh, basic row operation to the matrix form, uh, inspect the uh, rows of the matrix. If you found out that one row is multiple of another row, there is a chance that either there is no solution for that system of equation or there are infinite number of solutions. Here is our last example. The difference between this example and the previous example is this second equation here. As I recommended before uh, start solving the equation, uh, spend some time inspecting the equation, see if one equation is multiple of another equation. In fact, here, if I divide both sides of the second equation by two, I would get the same as what I have on line one. Here, I have three planes representing those equations. As you can see here, uh, two of the planes are overlaid representing the first and second equation and the intersection of these three planes is a line. Let me uh, highlight that line for you. So this line here is the intersection of these three planes. And as a result, the system of equation has infinite number of solutions. because there are infinite number of points on this line. Let's go back to the equation. So uh, now that I know the answer, I'm going to start uh, solving the equation using row reduction to see what I get uh, with that method. So I start by changing the equation form to matrix form. So the matrix would be a 3 by 4 matrix. So I have 1, 2, negative 1 on the first column, 2, 4, and 3 on the second column, negative 3, negative 6, and negative 4 on the third column, and the last column I have 9, 18, and 15. So I need to transform this matrix to an echelon matrix. So 
So I need to transform these entries to one. And these entries here and here need to be transformed to zero. So similar to the previous examples, uh, first step is to transform these entries to zero. So this is step one. And then transforming this three to zero is step two. Then these two entries here need to be transformed to zero. Step three. And finally this uh, entry two need to be transformed to zero. So this is step four. So step one. Let me copy the matrix here. So I need to transform this two to zero. And to do that, I replace the second row with R2 minus two times R1. And I also need to transform this negative one to zero. And it can be done by replacing the third row by R3 plus R1. And the first row remains unchanged. I'll go ahead and implement these operations. So I have one, two, negative three, and nine on the first row. On the second row, I have two minus two times one, four minus two times two negative 6 minus 2 times negative 3 18 minus 2 times 9 on the third row I have negative 1 plus 1 3 plus 2 negative 4 plus negative 3 15 plus 9 and if I simplify this matrix, I will get 1, 2, negative 3, and 9 on the first row. On the second row, I will get, so this 2 minus 2 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0, negative 6, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. So negative 6 plus 6 is 0. 18 minus 18, I have 0 here. On the third row, I have 0. 3 plus 2 is 5. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. And the last entry is 24. So as you can see, I got all 0 on the second row. And that means that if I transform it to the equation form, I will get 0 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z equals 0. In other words, I have 0 equals 0. And this is a trivial answer. And that means that I have infinite solutions. I hope solving these three examples uh, helped you to better understand the row reduction method and uh, how you can use it to solve system of equations, especially system of three linear equations and two linear equations. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below this video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If this video helped you in any way, please hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy your content and would like to see more.